Hey gang, it's Brian from FX Bilious. Today we're gonna to talk about English, also known as cue ball spin. And some of this information might be a little too basic for some of you advanced players or high intermediate players, but here's a quick test for you. If you know the difference between running English and reverse English, inside English and outside English, then you probably will know everything that we're gonna cover in this video today. You might still want to watch it because you might pick up a tip here or there, but in the meantime, the video is designed towards the people that hit me in the comments and say, what exactly is running English? You use the term running, is that like inside? Is that outside? Well, they're different and the same, and I'm gonna cover that in today's video, but if you don't know those terms, inside, outside, running, reverse, then you need to watch this because we discuss this type of English in almost every one of our videos and you won't know what's going on unless you know these terms. So let's get started. First things first, there are certain terms that are used in pool all over the country, especially in little niches where you've got these bars or whatever. You've got a bunch of people who haven't been exposed to a lot of pool education, a lot of professional level pool, a lot of elite players where people are using terms and saying things that are just flat out incorrect to the point that they start to become acceptable. For this video, one of the things you have got to understand is when we talk about English, we are not talking about draw, we're not talking about follow, we're not talking about hitting the ball high or hitting the ball low. That is not English. English is side spin by definition. So we're talking about hitting the ball on the right hand side or on the left hand side. Now it might be high or low left or right, but just hitting the ball center low or, or center high is not English. You will hear some people who should know better referring to it as English. It is not English. English is side spin, left or right. One of the terms that you're gonna hear a lot is left and right English. This is very simple. When you get down on a shot, when you're hitting the ball on the right hand side, it is right hand English, the ball is spinning counterclockwise, that is right hand English. When you are hitting the ball on the left of center, it is left hand English, the cue ball is spinning left. This has different effects on the ball that you're hitting, the cue ball, and your object ball that you're playing. We are not going to cover those effects today, but what you need to understand is that those balls are affected by what you're doing. One thing about that that you should know is that putting English on the ball, on the cue ball, is not intended to move the cue ball in space to a certain location. What we're doing is putting spin on the ball because we want something special to happen to our object ball or we want something special to happen to our cue ball once it hits a rail or in some special cases, a second ball. So understand that when you see us shoot these little drills like the semicircle drill, we're moving around a table, we are not using English to get the position. We might use English to throw a ball towards the pocket to allow us to get position, but the cue ball in most cases is not going to curve because you applied English to it unless you hit it incorrectly or you intentionally massated by shooting down on the ball. And what do I mean by that? If you are shooting jacked up and you shoot right hand English on a shot, it will curve as it goes down table. But that should not be the case. You should have a level cue and follow through on all of these shots and the cue ball will deflect, which is a whole different video. It will deflect, but it should not curve. If it cur this video is not about what the ball's effects are gonna be on the English. We have other videos for that, but I just want to give you a quick explanation as to what is happening to the cue ball when you apply different types of English. Here I have a shot on the two and we have a slight angle that's going to lead us over here. This is what the cue ball's action looks like without any English applied to the ball. You can see the path that the cue ball took after making the shot. Here's a very similar angle this time with right hand English, so the cue ball is gonna be spinning counterclockwise here. And notice the difference of, of the, um, the path of the cue ball. So you can see it took a much sharper angle here and came in here. 
if we take the exact same shot, or relatively close to the same shot, but this time with left hand English, watch how the cue ball reacts off of the rail here. You can see that our angle has changed. We straighten out a little bit more by having that left hand English on the ball versus having right hand English, which gives us a sharper angle. So those of you that aren't sure why we use English, that's a basic explanation, but I'm gonna give you a few more tips that are going to help you understand what's going on. Players who are new to using English on the ball tend to have a difficult time understanding the difference between inside English, outside English, running English, and reverse English. So I'm gonna to try to give you an explanation for all of this. Those two things, inside and running, outside and reverse, do not have the same meaning at all. You can have inside reverse English, you could have inside running English. So you have to put both of them together to understand what the cue ball is doing. So first things first, what is inside English and what is outside English? If you are hitting this ball from here with this cue ball and your tip is on this side of the ball, which would be right hand English, this is inside English. If you can imagine your tip being on the side that is closest to the object ball. So if our object ball was over here and we were shooting in that direction, this would be inside English. But inside English is the side Think of it as being on the inside of this cut, so it is closer to our object ball. That is inside English, happens to be right hand English here. Outside English, just the opposite. If I'm hitting this side of the cue ball, which is the left side, I'm putting clockwise spin on it, this is outside English. So, what is the difference between running English and reverse English? Let's take a look. When we talk about running English, the best thing to do is listen to the description. The definition of running English is the cue ball is running around the table, spinning in a direction makes it easiest for it to go around the table. I'll give you an example. I have this angle, so I'm shooting in this direction on the 12 ball. If my cue ball is going to come off of three rails and come around the table, if I put left hand English on this so that it is spinning in the direction that is going around the table, this is running English. So the shot looks like this. Now, it should also be noted that running English is the most used and is the most important. Why is it so important? Because shots like three rail kick shots, if we're playing that eight ball there, for example, when you use the diamond system, or you use any system for getting around the table, you're going to be using running English. Most of the systems that we teach you as far as uh, getting around the table for kick shots or position, you're going to be putting running English on the ball. So you need to understand that running English is exactly what it sounds like. One more example. If I'm shooting from here, going this way, Right hand English is running English. If I'm shooting from here, going that way, left hand English is running English. That's what gets the ball around the table. Reverse English would be counter to running English. Think of reverse English as doing the opposite of what the ball naturally wants to do. If we're on this side of the 12 ball and we shoot it into this side pocket, even without any kind of spin on the ball, the cue ball is gonna come off of these three rails and head down here. Not with the accuracy that we just shot it previously with, but it will come off of those three rails ultimately and head down here. If we don't want that to happen for whatever reason, we're playing position and we wanna stay on that side of the table. If we put reverse English on this ball so our cue ball is spinning against the grain, once it hits this rail, we're gonna have a totally different effect this is what we call reverse English. So here's one example and then I'll give you another. You can see that our ball, by spinning the opposite direction, was not able to come off of this rail and travel around the table. That's one example. Let's look at another. So here's another example of reverse English. 
in this case, which happens to be right-hand English, also happens to be inside English. Right-hand English, because we're hitting it on this side, inside English, because this is the side where our tip is closest to our object ball, and reverse, because we are sending the cue ball in a direction that is counter to the way it wants to go. From this angle, if we shot the 12 ball in, where is our cue ball going? It's going in that direction and then coming this way. If we wanted to get behind this eight ball to make this shot a lot easier, we could play, again, right hand, which is inside, and in this case, reverse English, shot looks like this. And now, instead of our cue ball going this way, you get more of a straight line. You're actually moving almost in line with the shot. Depending on the angle you have, you could do even more with this. You do need certain things when you are playing with inside English. You need to have a good stroke. At this distance, if you're new to using English, it makes the shot a little bit more difficult. There's a lot of factors that go into play, but I want you to see the effects of what this cue ball is doing as it comes off that rail. So if I wanted to get really greedy with this, I could let my stroke out and again, stay in line with this shot. So that's inside English and there are other uses for it. I'll show you one more, which is pretty cool. And then we'll look at something else. Here's one more illustration of what we can do with reverse English. We're on the 14, we wanna get on the eight. We'd like to be over here, right? We don't really have an angle that will take us to this pocket off of three rails. Actually, if we follow this, there's a good chance we'll end up in that pocket. We will never get to this point. But this is what right hand English on this ball, which because we're over here is gonna be inside. And because we're gonna hit that rail and come counter to the direction the ball actually wants to go, it will be reverse English. So the shot looks like this. And you can see that our ball came off of that rail and this rail instead of that rail and this rail, we get perfect position on the eight ball. That's inside English. Let's talk about a couple more things that you're going to have to keep in mind that could make this a little complicated for you. So let's take a look. So here's a situation where running English, inside, outside, left, right, counterclockwise, clockwise, can become very confusing for some players. So I will explain it as best we can. If I shoot a draw shot and our cue ball comes here and I wanted to go down table, I wanted to have running English. Well, what would be running English here? It would be if the cue ball was spinning in this direction that's what would take it down table, which means I need to put left hand English on this if I'm coming backwards. If I was going forward and I wanted to have running English, I would hit it with right hand English and I'd come off of these two rails in the direction that it naturally wants to go. So by bringing it back to this rail with left hand English, good follow through on this shot. Our cue ball is spinning this way, so when it comes down, it brings it all the way down table on that sharp angle. So let's look at that same shot, but this time with reverse English, because I want you to see the effect that this has on our cue ball. This time we don't need to get down table. What we need to do, let's say, is to get here. I can shoot this as hard as I want with right hand English, and it's going to stall a bit when it gets to this rail here, so it won't run down the table. And I don't have to worry about letting my stroke out because the cue ball has this reverse spin to it. Did you see what happens there? It stalls and it bounces off and stays at this end of the table. So in this angle, that is reverse English. The other one was running English. That is very important to know. And now for the bad news about all of these shots. As I said earlier, in this video, we're not talking about a lot of things that are involved in English. I want you to understand the vocabulary of English and cue ball spin, but the mechanics, how you shoot it, how you compensate, things like that, we haven't discussed, but I want to touch on it real quick, just so that you understand. Outside English throws our cue ball 
into the object ball with the object ball going that way. So if we're putting left-hand English here, which in this case is outside, okay, the side furthest from the, the object ball, it is sending the cue ball down, spinning to the left, all right, spinning clockwise. It will hit that ball and it will push it just that much to the right-hand side. Inside English, if I hit it over here, it is doing just the opposite. Inside English, in most cases, in most, not all, but most cases, is the most difficult English to apply to the ball because outside English actually helps you make the shot and inside English makes the shot more difficult. In fact, in snooker, they call this the helping side because it actually helps you cut that ball towards the pocket. But it should be noted until you get to those videos that inside English makes these shots a lot more difficult. Obviously distance makes it more difficult. If you don't have a low deflection cue, I happen to be using a second generation Icon 2 and a Predator third generation 314 shaft. This is a low deflection shaft. So shooting these shots with English is not quite as difficult if, as if you have a standard deflection shaft. But in most cases, regardless of what you're using, you don't want to have this kind of distance when you're learning these shots because it's not going to help you any. Get up on the ball, make the shots a little bit easier, and you will learn what these different types of English are doing to the cue ball and to the object yeah. ball. And a lot of the videos that you've watched in the past, you weren't sure what we were talking about, will probably become a lot clearer to you. So maybe you watch some of those again. Have a great day. Check out this video. It's going to help you with some other things. And don't forget to subscribe. I appreciate you guys watching. And if you're watching and not subscribing, shame on you. Your competition is subscribing. And um, they get to see all these videos. So have a great day.